Hello and welcome to a short video, well, somewhat short video, describing how to upgrade the iOS on a Cisco router. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the 4000 series routers that are used inside of the Cisco Networking Academy. My name is Kelly Caudill and I'm the lead instructor and in contact at Stanley Community College's Academy Support Center and Instructor Training Center. And I'm going to take you through these steps and show you how to do this. To begin with, the very first thing you must do is you must obtain the iOS and the Armand package from Cisco.com. To do this, you must have a Netacad maintenance agreement in place. Now, the Netacad maintenance agreement, if you're not familiar with it, you can find information by going logging into Netacad.com, going to resources, all resources, and there's other ways to get to this. This is just the fastest way. Program resources, and then you will go to equipment information. Inside of here, you will see the Netacad maintenance folder. When you click in here, you will find an item called the Netacad maintenance overview PDF. This PDF describes what Netacad maintenance is. I don't have time in this video to go in, in depth on Netacad maintenance, but basically Netacad maintenance is a program that any Cisco Academy that is currently part of the program can download legally and use the iOS images that are used by any curriculum inside of the Netacad program. Now that is an important thing for you to realize. This spreadsheet right here, when I click on it and download it, I'm gonna open it up. This spreadsheet shows you the images that are allowed to be downloaded at no cost. I'm gonna click, you can see there's CCNA, and we'll come back to this one, but there's CCMP, B7, all of these are available here. Now we're gonna concentrate on CCNA today, but you'll notice for the 4200, 4321, and 4331 routers, um, there's an image here. There's a different one for the 4200s, but the 4300s, um, they have the, the same image. So I'm, all, I'm gonna be doing a 4321 today. If you're doing a 4200, you would want to download the 4200 image. Um, one quick thing here to give you an idea of what these are, the 4221s are a, a Cisco ISR that has an external power supply and you can purchase a pretty neat little 19 inch rack module that the, the router and the power supply fits into neatly <clears throat> and they slide right into a 19 inch rack. The 4321 has an external power supply and only rabbit ears for rack mount. I do not suggest this if you want a clean rack mount uh, situation. We ended up with 4321s because quite honestly during this COVID-19, they were the only routers available in stock to purchase. So we ended up with a large number of those. The 4331s are um, 1U internal power supply. They're the cleanest of the bunch, but they're also the most expensive out of these. So once you've downloaded this, document again from the equipment information netacad maintenance folder you can click directly on the image you want to get and it will take you to the cisco website now you'll need to log in and since everyone now has single sign-on you already have a um an account on cisco.com you'll say i'm logged in as me Here's the image, you'll notice it is an, a universal 4300 series image, so you can download it, just click download and download an image. Now, something that is not linked here that you're also going to need. Now, you don't always have to upgrade ROM monitor, but I strongly recommend you do simply because it fixes issues with items like NetLabs and items in the classroom where certain iOS images require a certain ROM monitor package. To get the ROM monitor package, you click one level up. So here's where I'm downloading my image. I'm going one level up, and you will see iOS, iOS XE ROM Mon software. Click here, and you'll see the package. You also notice that this package is indeed for both 4200 and 4300 um, ISR routers, and this is the ROM Mon that is recommended if you're going to be running the image that we're downloading. So again, Here's the image that I got to by clicking directly on the link in the Excel spreadsheet. And then once inside of here, I download this image and I go one level up and find the Raman software and get the most recent package. Once these two items are downloaded, you will need to place them on a USB drive because you're gonna use the USB port on your ISR 4000 series in order to connect to your router. 
Now I'm going to pull up. This is the router that I have that we're going to be working on. And the first thing I always do, and I will apologize before we go too far here. I have a USB to serial connector that for some reason is throwing in backspace characters. I have not had time to fix it. So we're just going to have to deal with it as I'm doing this video, but I'm going to do first a show platform. Now show platform allows you to see the current uh, CPLD or the current firmware version that's on this router. You'll see that R0 is running 16.73R. The image we're downloading is 16.12, uh, I think it's 12.2, we'll see it here in a minute, but it's 12.2R. Um, so we're going to upgrade this. We also can do a show ver and see that we're running version 15.5 of the iOS. So we've looked at that. We now know that we need to change that. The other thing I'll do here is look down here. And since you're going to be needing the security features, if you don't already have this enabled, um, you will need to do step two, license boot security level K9. And in this case, you'll see it says a vile right to use. What will happen eventually after the, the 90 days or 60 days, I think it's 90 days, this will actually turn to a right to use. So you don't have to pay for this image. The only reason you don't have to pay for this image though, because you are a member of the NetAcad maintenance agreement or you're a, and you are a Cisco Academy in good standing. If you are not a Cisco Academy in good standing, then uh, you would not have the right to use this image. I'm gonna put my USB drive in and you will see here in a minute, the USB will be mounted. There we go. I can do a directory listing of the USB drive. And again, this is my, yeah, my USB to serial driving me crazy. So it drives me just as crazy as it does you. You'll say I have all kinds of stuff on here. Some of it is not in, at all related to uh, this particular item, but it's just USB drive that I have. I'm gonna do a copy USB zero colon. Now you can tab this out. So I'm gonna do ISR 4000. And again, those backspaces are because of that so and then here's where you get a little bit confusing now you can use flash colon but the 4000 series actually uses boot flash so use boot flash uh, colon and again apologize but there we go and you'll see it get copied over so that's the armand package and now at this point the reason i've added this verify command into our instructions I've added it because we had actually downloaded an iOS image. We had placed that image onto the routers and everything was fine. There was no problem with it going on the USB drive, no problem downloading it. But when it was on the iOS routers, it would not boot and we could not figure out why. We ran verify against it and found out that even though it did not appear to be corrupted at all, the image was actually corrupted. So, be aware, I strongly recommend this verify step just to ensure that everything is okay. So I'm gonna go verify boot flash, ISR 4200 package. And what it does is it runs a checksum against it and tells you whether or not the image matches. In this case, it was verified, 1612.2R. So we're gonna upgrade from Armand 16, uh, I believe 16.5 to 1612. So, or 16.7 to 16.12. Uh, to do that, we now run the command upgrade, upgrade, Ramon file name, and then we do boot flash, and we do ISR 4200, and now R0. Now that's the ROM monitor we're going to upgrade on the this on the 4300s, so 4321s, 4331s. You'll use R0. On the 4200s, you'll use R1. You will see that when you do the show platform. So do a show platform on the, um, on the 4200s, 4221s, you'll see R1 instead of R0. We're gonna upgrade from 1673R to 1612R. I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna start the upgrade process. Now I'm gonna pause the video here because it takes a while for this to do the upgrade. Uh, it's a couple minutes, maybe five, eight minutes. Um, so we're gonna let it do it. Do not take off. Uh, the power and try to make sure the power doesn't go out when this is happening because this could cause issues. You can recover from it, but it is uh, hard to recover from it. So I'm going to pause and we'll come back when this is finished. Okay, so now after about five to eight minutes here, you can see that the Armand has been updated. So Armand update complete. 
I'm now going to reload the router and let it reload completely. And we will come back to check this to make sure that the Armon has been updated after the reload is completed. So I'll pause again and come back shortly. Okay, now the router has rebooted. We are at step six, item C. We're gonna verify that the new Armon is running. We do have to be in privilege exec mode. We're gonna do a show platform. And you should see now that we're running 16.12.2R. So we have upgraded R0 and all of the Armon taxi to 16.12.2R. At this point, we can, let's do a dir boot flash boot flash oops, boot flash and you will see that we still have the package file in there so we're going to delete that package file there's no need for it to stay in boot flash so isr and i'm just tabbing over folks till it's a it gets the image name and i'm going to delete that and again i've got to do this because of my crazy usb to serial connection now at this point i have um the images here I'm actually going to copy now over the new image and let's see what's here. We've got a couple things in here. I don't know why there's a couple iOS images in here, but there are. But we're going to copy the new one over. We're going to copy over. Actually, I'm going to delete one of these. I'm going to delete the 14. So I'm going to Dell boot flash ISR. And yes, that is as aggravating as it seems it would be. Um, 14, I'm gonna get rid of it. So we'll have enough room. And at this point now I'm gonna copy from my USB zero, that image that I downloaded earlier, which is the 4300-1694 image to my boot flash. Now this is a big image, so it's gonna take a while to copy. It's a 400, almost 500 meg image. So we're gonna let it copy and I will pause until it finishes and then we will come back. Okay, so now we have the image copied into our boot flash and I'm going to verify, again, this is an optional step, but I strongly recommend you do it. Boot flash, ISR 16. We're going to verify this. Now this takes a while. This is a, a very big image again. So I'm going to have to pause the video while it does this. It takes about five minutes for this to verify or a little less than that, three to five minutes. So I'll pause and come back once the verification succeeds. Okay, so after the verification, you'll see that the embedded hash verification has been successful. So this tells me my iOS image I copy from my USB drive is not corrupt and is available to be used to boot. Now, step nine here is really optional. Um, you can do this if you want. I will tell you one of the things to be careful of is when you do a show ver, make sure if you do step nine, make sure that you uh, that the config register is set to 2102, not 2142. Otherwise, this boot system command that you put into your running config and copy the startup config will not be there. I've run into that issue. But I'll also tell you, I've upgraded a lot of these routers and quite honestly, at this point, most of the time, and, and again, I'm gonna make a liar out of myself, but most of the time at this point, what I just do is I delete the old image. Um, so I delete that ISR 4300K903. I just get rid of that image. And do another dir boot flash. You'll see the only image left in here now is the K91694. And I just reload my router. Now I'm gonna go ahead and since the config register was wrong, I'm gonna change my config register back to, um, to what it needs to be. Register zero by 2102. All right, and I'm gonna do a control Z. And then I'm gonna reload this and I'm gonna let it reload. And then once it reloads, we will I'll save the config. Once it reloads, I will show you that the iOS image 16.9.4 is successfully loaded and that we have our upgraded Armon. So again, I will pause when this reloads because the 4000 series routers are extremely slow to reload. You're looking at between seven and 10 minutes, probably seven to eight minutes for them to reload fully. 
So I will once again pause and we will come back once it reloads. Okay, now after a reboot, I'm going to, once again, just as a final thing, do a show platform. And you can see our mod has been updated to 16.12.2R and a show ver, which is short for show version, by the way, which shows that I am running version 16.9.4 of the iOS. And I've got the security K9 right to use turned on. So folks, this is a fairly easy way to upgrade the Armon and iOS on your 4000 series, 4221s, 4321s, and 4331s. This process has worked for me on about eight different 4321s so far, and at least one 4221 that a coworker has used it on. So at this point, I feel confident this is a fairly easy and good way to update your iOS on these routers. I hope this has helped, and I hope you have a great day.